Any tips on today so we don't end up like you? As the, the old wise men once said, hang on to your heinies. Look at this. My wife let me take the uh, dining room chair. That was awful Smart nice of her. <laughs> that right? was kind of nice. Yeah. Where is she though? Well, she don't exist. That's why I got to take the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> Rules for the airboat, you got to be over 31 inches tall and don't go behind the fan. There he is. Nice Hook job, Tommy. Up, Larry. Pretty sure it's a whitey. I got him up about 15 feet. And okay. what we noticed the last couple days with this low ceiling, low cloud cover, we've had a lot of fog too. And they don't really want shiny stuff, so we went to a white. White and purple seems to be the color. Here we go. Smells good, tastes good. I just brought the scoop over. What do you got there, Tommy? And there we are, Larry. White fish? White fish for dinner. You knew it. No bait either. Just pump that thing, make them fish chase up. And if you watch your bait under the hole, when you're pumping it, it's swimming out, swimming out. And just envision on your paws that you're trying to get this bait to go and stall. But you don't want it to stall too long either because then they're gonna see that it's fake. So if you stall it, they get up to it, they don't bite it, instantly go up, make them chase again, chase, and then give, let them get up to there, give them that pause again. And it's only about a three second, sec, two second pause. You know, but you got to bring them up in them spurts where you're giving them that chance to catch it because they're not like a trout where they're just going to go wide open to the top. Tommy. Boy, like this color, Larry. Yes. That was two whiteys come up. That's a classic. Come on, Tommy. Pair, they run in pairs a lot. Why, I don't know, but. Is it a good yeah. hit? Yeah, you can definitely tell. They just grab it. This one grab that. Ooh. Whoa, whoa. They aren't the, uh, you'll see some really big white fish today. I mean, we get them up to like 26, 27 inches in the bay. So now he's kind of giving up my last save is go down to the bottom pound it. pound it on the bottom and see if he comes back on a okay. picky one then i'll pound the bottom and i'll pick it up like two inches and hold it and then i'll pound the bottom a couple pumps and then i'll i'll pick it up the two inches and hold it and that's if they're lazy they'll come and sometimes they'll come and grab it so i've had a couple white fish now that are coming up coming up they're chasing it forever and they're getting right on it but i couldn't quite finish them off where sometimes i'll put this moonshine straight up so you see that treble hook that's sticking right in the center that's where you're going to put your minnow head on i'm going to go right through the bottom of that jaw right between the eyes and out through the top of the head like that so when that bait's swimming forward that that minnow head's right in the center of the body and it won't make a turn left and right and the other thing i don't even like with whitefish i don't like them fins hanging down so i'll just take and pinch that whole gill plate and the fins right off I got the smallest presentation I can on that treble hook. Like right now, I'm trying to get them right by bottom. I'll literally put it so my bait sets on bottom like a half inch from the water line. So I know if I stay up like an inch, inch and a half on my down paws, I'm just hovering above that sooty bottom. And sometimes if they're not going to chase and finish it, you'll get them doing this. Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I'll tell you, Tommy, you know what? One tip that I really appreciate that I've learned from you fishing in this deep water with a lot of current is? Uh, angling your transducer. So today we, we did have the current cranking. We could have did a little while ago. The current died down a little bit now. We got a, a little bit of current going to the south. Yes. So if you think about a transducer, all it is is a flashlight hanging on a rope. As it goes down, it gets wider. The cone, cone gets higher. Right. So if we want to get our transducer to shine that way, to go towards my lure, we would just put it on the edge of the ice on that side of the hole and adjust how far your unit is from the hole until you get that bait. Of course, with glare, I like to pack a little snow on it. Right, yeah. there you go. Right. If you got a crank and current and you're bringing that up, as you get closer to your hole, your bait's gonna start sinking to the center more. It is. So I'll just kick my unit so my deucer's straight down when, they, when I'm finishing the fish. 
Because then he's right under your hole and you don't want the transducer angle. Why is this your favorite unit? I got a little bit of mix. We still got some 28s too. Okay. I'm definitely not against them. I can tell you that the 30 picks up a small lure on the outside edge of that cone just a little better. In the deep water, we can differentiate the size of what we're fishing now. And how Where was the that? the 28 always worked great. You could tell the fish were down there, but you couldn't really tell is that a herring or is that a good sized lake trout when you're in like 200 feet. With this, I can tell what size that fish is in the zoom in any depth of water. Which makes a lot of difference, especially because you have so yes. many smelt hearing, you yep. have so many different forge bases. And back in the in day, there. we were always like, well, we know stuff's going by, but nothing's really chasing our bait. Is that lake trout? Or now I can say, nah, that's just herring. We haven't seen many of the game fish today. Got a hot one, Tommy? Yep. Nice job. Jeez, you got oh, it down. That? that was a herring? That, I wouldn't have believed that thing come flying down at me like 100 miles an hour. I think I'm gonna let him go. He's such a good swimmer. Yeah. <laughs> you as well. Ho ho! Ho ho, baby! Ho ho, yeah! -ho. Five feet below the ice. That nice was a shallow job. one, too. Big superior candy right there. Pile of them today. There should be a bunch of these things running under the ice. And I'm thinking as we get a little bit more daylight, they should get cruising more and more. There you go, Tommy! There we go, hey! You're killing me! Coho! Up high? Up high, just come darting up. Uh oh. No ho, coho! Here we go, baby. I like it, I like it. Here we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Off the bottom. Yeah. Deep coho. Deep coho. We'll, we'll take, take them any way we can get them. That's a nice sized salmon, boy, for, for a winter salmon. These fish in the spring, we're getting them in April and May. They're going to be the biggest spring cohos we've seen. Yeah, they're going to be. And they are so good eating. Here we go, Mikey. Hey, Mikey, how was that brat, buddy? What do you got going here now? Oh, there you go. A brown nice. trout, a new species for the day. Beautiful. Gotta love that one. Just absolutely crushed that. That was high again, do you, said? We came right up high and just smoked it. I love that stuff, man. They're watering the moonshine. Too. Yep. The old so we got spike, perch, coho, herring. Whitefish. Whitefish, brown trout. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Big fish. Big fish, big fish, big fish. Woohoo! Oh, look at that rod. Just absolutely cranked over. Was that on the bottom? Yeah. Oh, and you are the man, the myth, the legend. Ho oh, ho! Another species for the day. Oh, are they sharp? Yeah, they are. Them small ones like that. Yeah, you really gotta watch it with these small ones. These are just razor blades, the scoops yeah. they call them. That's what protects them, right? Yep. When they're little. Nice job, Andy. Hooked up! Nice job, Mikey. Yeah, Where'd nice you come from? Splake. Down on the bottom yeah, or up high? Yeah, he's probably about 20 feet off the bottom. Dropped down just about 10 feet. And you were way up here for the yeah, coals. Yeah, I was about 15 un feet under the ice, and man, he came shooting up, was not shy. That is the cross between a brook trout and a lake trout. So they're a planted fish. They don't reproduce. They're just meant for the sport fisherman, and it's probably right there with a coho. I love. Great it's eating. Great, great eating. It's a brook trout, pretty much. So super good meat. What do you have there? I got about a uh, 10 and uh, an 8. Hey, 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 you know something? I figured out what I was doing wrong, and unfortunately, it's towards the end of the day. I was definitely over jigging it. I was using a glide bait, you know, I was using a shiver minnow, and that's my problem a lot of times is that I'm constantly moving it too much. And you know, I know better, and when you think about it, and when you watch that bait, it's constantly moving, and it does need to stall out for that second. So I went 
to the old standby, the Castmaster Gold, and I'll tell you what, perfect fish. Perfect. 15 and a half, Castmaster Gold, and I, if I would have had the spoon on all day long, I bet you I would have done better. You know, that is a, an issue for a guy like me, that ADHD stuff, where you constantly have to be moving stuff all the time. I don't give it that pause. And I was watching you and I was trying to mimic that, and so many times I had fish follow it, and I just, again, didn't give it enough time. That's where I like the spoon yep. a lot better. It's a lot easier for a guy like me. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. <laughs>